Ooh, happy days. Oh wow, that's certainly a nice impressive female, this one here. Happens to be a two and a half inch female Haplopus species Columbia large. AKA the pumpkin patch that I proudly named Kina from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Non-aggressive tarantula, but certainly very fast. The Columbia species small will pretty much max out at this size. However, the species large will get up to having a four inch leg span. Uh, certainly has a little bit more growing to do. Um, I consider her to be a mature female at this stage. So I can certainly breed her if I find a mature male. Wow. Totally unexpected, but definitely you can see a, a massive improvement in size. At least she grew about half an inch, maybe even three quarters of an inch. Alright, so this tarantula is really sought after. This is a one inch unsexed specimen of Hapactera pulcherpes, which is the golden leg blue baboon. This was the most second most extensive sling that I bought. This one I paid $200 from Tarantula Canada, the first one being P. Hanuma Vilasimica back in the day when they were extremely rare at $215. Now hopefully with H. Pulker peas, and we call them HP for short. We'll see hopefully more breeding done, and this will drive the cost down and they'll become much more affordable. So, this is kind of the most sought after baboon that everyone would love to get. Kind of a reminiscent of a cobalt blue in the blue colorations of their legs and the orange color of an OBT very awesome looking specimen all right so if you can just make out the leg over here uh, this is the heteroscodra maculata the togo starburst baboon a very impressive baboon that gets up to having a five and a half inch leg span uh, this is libby she's around four four and a half inches She's pretty much a mature female. I remember the HMAX very well. Uh, I actually happened to do, do a breeding project of this one back in 2010, back six years ago. And when I was pulling the egg sac, unfortunately that didn't pan out very well. And I actually called it, it happens to be the most popular video on my channel having about almost 7.1 million views. And over here is another HMAC uh, that I got from Tay. Hiding there, I don't want to disturb this one because HMACs are not really uh, friendly species and <laughs> uh, they have very potent venom. So yeah. And this one here is my other Heteroscodra maculata, Togo Starburst Baboon, that I got from Tay. Don't really see it very much like Libby. They're pretty reclusive in nature, so you won't see it very much. Uh, so this one is around, I would say, a good two and a half inches, maybe three. I didn't really have a chance to sex her when I initially got this one, but I know that uh, she's doing well and she's eating her crickets and superworms. Every time I offer her the, in the feeding video, she almost always eats it. So now, number 62, you're looking at one of my larger terrestrial old worlds. This one is a full-grown female Hysterocrates gigas which is the Cameroon Red Baboon. This is Elena, she's around six inches. Now, this is something I really wanna try and I never had an opportunity to do this in the past, but now 
I'll be looking out for a colony of H. gigas and hopefully if Tarantula Canada ends up breeding their H. gigas or any Hysteriocrates species I'm gonna buy like maybe a couple of slings and put them in a colony and see how they do. Now my good friend Rose Keefe uh, who is sending me at the end of this month her mature male P. Cancerides named Stavros she has a colony of five and six of these H. gigas in a big Tupperware container and she's showing me videos of them and they're doing super well and that alone has got me very excited to actually set up a colony for myself so whenever I happen to have a egg sack uh, if either tanglesandwebs.com or Tarantula Canada has some I'm gonna be buying like five or three or four of them or maybe five together and putting them in the same enclosure and seeing how well they do this will be a very good learning experience as well as a great documentation project to be put on YouTube now this is only if I can try to find some giga slings that come from the same sack and they're not fully separated because that would be a really, really awesome project to try out. Oh, just perfect. I wanted to get a nice video of this one. Number 64. Da, 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 da. This is a Brazilian dwarf pink leg. <laughs> Rainbow Road, my favorite. Cochiana Bruneeps. This is Kagome. Yeah, she didn't like my singing. Oh well. <laughs> but it was a nice uh, video to get of her. This is a dwarf pink leg, and this is the max that they'll grow. Probably will get maybe half an inch big, but I'm not expecting her too much. The coloration looks very similar to that of Bracket Palma Classy, which is the Mexican pink. Although this one is certainly a dwarf tarantula. So it's going to be a lot smaller. Uh, I will probably be updating her into a deli cup uh, in the near future. Because it uh, looks a bit small. But very beautiful specimen and I named her Kagome after the show in Yasha. Alright guys, now on to my wonderful collection of Lassiodora bird eaters. So I'm going to be showing you numbers 65 to 67 is a trio of Brazilian fire red bird eaters, Lassiodora difficilis. So this is the male that I purchased from Tay, the second of three teas I got from him. And as you can see on his abdomen, the bald spot is the characteristic bluish black color so that means that uh, this guy will be molting very shortly so I'm hoping to get a video of him doing it if not then I will do an exact video that I did before with the Mesoam Palace and Sexes Molten and show you that uh, this was sold to me as a potential male so when he matures if he's a male, then he'll be bred with Dora, the female that I've owned for the past seven years. This was the 49th tarantula that I started out with. Well, bought, not really started out with, but anyways. This is her. Uh, she's about six inches, not even close to being full grown. Uh, at this stage she's pretty much considered a juvenile. Uh, she'll get up to having a 9 to 10 inch leg span, very similar to that of Lassiodora para hibana, a salmon pink bird eater. And the next one, the last one, is a little baby difficilis. Uh, which is over there. Sweet. Alright, so this is a Lassiodora that you don't really see 
in many collections and it's kind of rare. This one is a Lassiodora Fracta, which is a Brazilian smoky gray bird eater. This is definitely not a very friendly Lassiodora as if I do touch her she'll right away bite the paintbrush. She's currently around four and a half inches. Her name is Willow and they'll pretty much identically look as the Alpara Hibana except for the fact it doesn't really have much pink on her body and they'll get up to the same eight to ten inch leg span. Certainly a very feisty and very flicky uh, Lassiodora. And also, like all Lassiodoras, savage eaters. Number 69. Sexy number. Designate this one to my Necroth, who is my juvenile male, Lassiodora Klugi, the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. So what sets these guys apart from your traditional Lassiodora para hibana uh, is going to be the fact that the Klugi has much more red hair on their abdomen, giving their common name the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. Now they're going to get similar in size, like 8 to 10 inches. Um, feisty eater, not very friendly, but certainly a must-have in the collection. Super, super easy to take care of. Alright, number 70. Get a load of this one. This is a really beautiful Lassiodora Parahibana, the salmon pink bird eater. Now, she is pretty chunky. She's currently around 6 inches. She has slightly much more growing to do. These guys get up to having a 8 to 10 inch leg span. And her name is Daniela. And I raised this one up as a tiny half inch spiderling back seven years ago. Number 71 is my other Lassiodora Parahibana Salmon Pink Bird Eater. I bought this one from Cayman on Arachnid Boards over five years ago. And she's certainly grown ever since. This girl is a lot more chunkier than Daniela. Currently about six and a half, seven inches. Still a little bit more growing to do. Super good eater. Love this one. Also a great alternative to the Theraphosa species because these are ridiculously easy to care for and super cheap. A typical Lassiodora egg sac will consist of at least 2,000 to almost 2,500 eggs and a good 70 to 80 percent of them are almost always going to be viable. So you can pick up these guys as cheap as three to five dollars depending on which online dealer you buy them from. Over here for a quarter inch in Canada five dollars is the price to pay for one of these species that will get up to huge monsters as they grow. Very fast growing species. Now if you see the beauty of this specimen and that specimen, this is the Lassiodorides striatus which is the Goliath striped lake bird eater. Now I do have a sling of this, about a one inch and here she is. Very skittish, but certainly can't wait to see how fast they'll be growing and reaching that nice coloration that you've seen in the second picture I just showed you. 
Alright, as the infamous Mortal Kombat character will say, GET OVER HERE! Or COME HERE! So, time to take a little break from the tarantulas and film two of my four scorpions. These two happen to be Laris Quinquistriatus, which is the Death Stalker scorpion from the Middle East. And here I have two potentially gravid females. So here's one of them, and the second one is right over here. Both of them ate fantastically in my latest uh, feeding video, and hopefully I'll get them to eat into this one. This one is a usually good eater, and this one kind of surprised me because uh, she used to be a very shy eater, and now she started eating again. Definitely not for the faint-hearted as these are bucids and are potentially lethal. Now these scorpions are not for the faint-hearted. These are bucids and are pretty potent in venom. That is a hot scorpion that should not be attempted for the beginners. The Death Stalker. Sounds positively deadly. Okay, so I decided to name this one Madalena. You've just seen this one in my last video. This is my three and a half inch female Megafabina Mesomalas, which is the Costa Rican red leg. A beautiful example of a rare. Megafabema. Really impressive looking, especially the redness on the legs. So, sure enough, my Megafabema Mazoma last molted, and soon after that, th this one has molted. And this is the more common one in the hobby. This is the Megafabema Robustum, which is the Colombian giant. Red Lake. These got up to having a six to eight inch leg span, and they have this unique threat display where if you touch the abdomen, it'll start to bop up and down and start to stand on its hind legs to give it an appearance that it looks larger. Now if it really becomes agitated, the spider will start to spin around in circles and release the more painful urticating hairs that are located on their hind legs. They'll pick up and start throwing at you and it's the equivalent of getting fiberglass very very painful. Now this of course is way too small of a container so I'm going to be putting on with the Cochiana and the Kilobrachis from Briatus a rehouse video where I'll be rehousing both these specimens in six liter shoebox enclosures. And I save the best for last for part one, and it's this one. 75 is my mature female Monocentropus balfouri, which is the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. There we go. I just wanted to get you guys a nice video of her in the open. I see her kind of frequently, which is really good. I mean, this is as gorgeous as you're going to get. A very once at the, upon a time a rare specimen now with breeding. These are much more cheaper. Tarantula Canada sells a quarter inch specimens for fifty dollars and they're super easy to raise. Now for the H. Poker Peas picture this tarantula, except the peach color, will be, be replaced by the orange colors of an orange bitey thing. So far, out of the 
African species that I have collected, this one by far takes the cake for being the most beautiful. Then again, I have to see how my HP will be doing and seeing how this will grow and see how it will turn out, but so far this will be definitely a first place winner in my book as my favorite baboon species. Simply gorgeous. Lily is a full grown four and a half to near five inch female. All right, everyone. So this concludes part one of my Arachnitur video. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did filming it. And stay tuned for part two, where I'll feature the remaining tarantulas in the genus N, all the way up to X. Enjoy. And speaking of NX, it's kind of ironic because that is the name of Nintendo's next generation console. I wonder what games will be coming up with. Anyways, back to business. This is number 76. This is a suspect female, about an inch and a half, Neo Holy Thelly Incy Gold Form, which is the Trinidad Olive. So it was previously a Holy Thelly, now it's a Neo Holy Thelly. Intense Weber and very communal, just like the Monocentropus Balfouri that you've seen at the end of the first part. By the way, her name is Foxy Cleopatra from the infamous Austin Powers 3 gold member. I kind of wish it would make a fourth one. I really love comedy. <laughs> Anyways, this is number 77. Nandu Chromatis. <laughs> this one here is a Brazilian white stripe bird eater from Brazil. He's got up to having a six inch leg span. This one here is around four and a half, five inches. So it's a sub adult female and fully breedable. Her name is Nadia. Sounds very Russian. All right guys, I'm not gonna get too close to this one. Uh, I tried to coax her out, but she doused me with so many hairs. And this is the one that I react most strongly to these hairs. Um, these have urticating type 3. This one here is a Nandu Colorado Velosus, which is the Brazilian black and white tarantula. Uh, her name is Mina, 5 inch girl. Oh, maybe. Ah! Oh, now she comes to say hello. Yeah, she's nice. Wanna get your 15 seconds of fame on this camera? Well, there we go. That's what they look like. All right, T number 79. I had to fish this one out. Uh, this is the juvenile unsex specimen of Omothymus valasiopes which was formerly a Lampropalma species, most commonly called the Singapore Blue. Now this species is going to be an awesome tarantula when it gets larger. Uh, eight to nine inch leg span is pretty much the common average size of these buggers. Reminiscent of the Cobalt Blue, definitely very fast and None too friendly either. <laughs> T number 80. Now you can see on the right hole, you can make out the hair and the legs. This is another Singapore blue, but this one is a little juvenile. Number 81 is a suspect male, Orphanaceus philippinus, which is the Filipino orange, which gets around five to six inches, which I'm really excited for. Number 82 is Jade, my six inch female 
Panthibetius species Ecuador, possibly Platyoma, the pink bloom bird eater. These guys got up to having a eight to nine inch leg span. The females are going to be exactly colored as you see in this video. They're going to be brown. However, they're males. Oh my god, they're beautiful. They're going to be a hot purple pink color. If you remember back a couple of years ago when I did tarantula feeding video 59, I had a mature male, uh, Plepatayama, and he was gorgeous in his purple and pink colors. And this one is a confirmed female and a very hungry eater just like your Lassiodora. 83 is a one inch unsexed Pamphibedius fortis which is the Colombian brown bird eater. They'll get very similar in size to the P. platyoma. Number 84 is a beautiful example of a Pamphibedius ultramarinus, which is the Ecuadorian purple pink femur. This is a three inch female named Lauren. Number 85 is a Pamphibedius vespertinus spiderling, which is the Colombian red bloom bird eater. It will have the size and the colors of your Pamphibedia species Ecuador, however, is going to be accented with prominent red hairs on the legs. So you can see this is a Pamphibedia sling uh, because they have the characteristic Christmas tree like pattern on their abdomen. Well, it's awesome to look at for spiderlings, unfortunately, once they reach their juvenile stage, they'll lose this markings. Wah. Okay, so now two scorpions remain in my collection. The one on the left is an unsex specimen. I don't know if it's a female or male yet, but this is a emperor scorpion. Pandinus Imperator. Now it's starting to become very rare uh, because you can no longer get wild caught adults. So you're going to have to buy them as captive bred and they're not as easy to find. But I recommend this one for the beginners uh, because as you can see the pedipops, the claws are much more larger than a buthid, which you'll see in a bit. So that means that it isn't going to be very potent in venom and it's mainly going to rely on grabbing their prey with the big pedipops rather than stinging. And these guys get up to 7 inches which is one of the largest in the scorpion family. And this one here is an also good contender. This is the largest buthid that's also going to get a 7 inch body span. This one here is a Parabuthus velosus, which is the African black hairy thick tail. So this is the orange morph. The orange morph signifies the orange coloration on the pinchers, the pedipalps, as well as the legs. Now, if you see the claws on this one, they're much more shorter than an emperor, so the venom is going to be much more significantly toxic. And these guys are not very friendly at all. They'll be very quick to sting and are very fast moving. So I don't recommend this for a first time scorpion collector. But you can see why they call it the African hairy thick tail. So if you look at the tail, you 
you can see the hairs. 